Hi everyone, this is Megan Van Petten. And this is Lindsay Poss. You're listening to the Esports Next podcast. Here, we will highlight the fantastic guests and speakers at the Esports Next conference. Esports Next 2022 is presented by Morgan Stanley and is located in Sweet Home, Chicago. Don't forget to register to secure your spot at the conference and enjoy the show. Hello, and welcome to this episode of the Esports Next podcast, the official podcast of the Esports Next conference. I'm Lindsay the Boss Poss, and I'm joined today by my friend and co-host Megan Van Patten. Thank you, Lindsay. Good morning. For this episode, we're delighted to welcome Berta Maloney, who's the Chief Innovation Officer and co-founder at The Game Hers. Berta, welcome to the show. Hey, y'all. Thank you for having me. (laughs) I'm excited to talk with you all for a little while today. This is such a special show, especially since um, obviously this podcast is for our Esports Next 2022 conference here in Chicago. And you're moderating Gaming for Everyone. And why this is so exciting for me is Lindsay Poss is also <laughs> on the panel. <laughs> so, yes. what, what are the chances? Yeah. yeah, what are the chances? I'm super excited for the panel. I mean, my, my, my tagline and motto in life is that I'm all love with appropriate doses of rage Mm. and it really fits with a lot of the things that I do right now in this space which is really about talking more about um, how we create spaces that are welcoming inclusive um, and inviting quite Mm. frankly Mm. for groups that the system uh, at large tends to marginalize but also what's what we see in esports because we're just like a microcosm of this bigger world and how do we just change that and flip it on its head and so it gets me really angry and i come from a loving place but we really have to do something about it so i'm excited to talk a little bit more about um your thoughts on that and just different things so cool uh, i think that love with appropriate doses of rage is an absolutely accurate way <laughs> to describe how many of us exist in the 21st century so thank you for I that so. can you tell me what was your entry point into esports how did you get into your current role yeah so i would say that i am i'm i'm in engage with the larger industry and then esports is part of the work that we do. So I'm not, you will never see me playing on a competitive esports team. You might see me working at one or you might see me collaborating with one, but I'm definitely not there. And how um, I entered the space is I think professionally it's happened in the last two and a half years, but I would always say that I'm adjacent to gaming because my kids game, I've gamed. It's just been something that's been in our lives. And I think that's what a lot of people are realizing, right? When we talk about it as an industry, I think because it's something that we've all loved and we've done for different reasons, it almost escapes you that, oh, wait, for this thing to actually exist in the world, there's a bunch of people making that happen. There's a whole industry behind it and you can actually work and bring your creative brilliance to that space. And so for me, founding the gamers was really about creating a space where we can elevate and amplify the voices and center the voices of women and femme identifying gamers in a way that we do both. And we talk about the things that are the issues and we create space where we can elevate, amplify, and actually just shed a light. Because for so long, I think people obviously have, when they think of the gamer, they don't think of us, right? That's changing, right? We're evolving in that. But there's this stereotypical thing that people have in their mind of who a gamer is and even what that term means. So um, yeah, I mean, one of my co-founders, Heather, approached me with the idea, um, had been in a meeting and it was just like, my, my, mainly men. She's like, wait, where are the women? And so my background um, just made this a a, a really great fit and a really great time. Tell us a little bit about your background. Yeah. So I do too many things. um, So I'm trying to figure out how to manage, (laughs) how to have work-life fulfillment. But historically, I mean, I have quite a, I love to share it because there's no one path to get to a a career in gaming and or in esports. And so I um, was a community organizer from the time I was in 
like 17 or 18. And that's what I did. And I've historically done anti-racism and anti-oppression work all over the country, lots of different states in lots of different ways. And I founded an arts elementary school. So I was actually a school principal for a while. And it's always fun to think about that um, because I think about like when kids would get in trouble and like their parents would bring like their console to my office, like take it all away. And I'd be like, oh, okay, we could come up with a different strategy, right? I was that principal that was like, no, let's not do that. But like, obviously this is something that is helping them. So how do we work through that? But I always think of those stories because I just remember um, parents bringing their their um, their kids' video games. They're playing this too much and that's why they're having trouble at school. And so um, I was a principal and I've worked with leaders. I've worked with people that have been doing startups, which is in essence what I do right now um, with the GameHers. And I have done a lot of just creating space and holding space for individuals to um I like to say just like be their full selves and to shine because I think that that's really what we need for people in the world. And so I've gotten a lot of opportunities to really do that at the gamers and bring a lot of my other world into this world. Verda, hearing about your background is so cool. <laughs> what a unique way or yeah, what a unique entry point into kind of gaming. But I love that, you know, organizing and, and doing anti-racism work and opening an arts elementary school like that's just not <laughs> that is not something that you uh, get to hear about every day so it's so cool since you've Thank kind you. of gotten into the industry started a company and been in for a couple years now what uh -huh. have been some of the changes or trends that you've seen uh maybe maybe not just from your own experience in the industry but from someone who's been a gamer for a long time what yeah. have you seen any any big changes any small changes anything you're excited about or not excited yeah. about so I think, is that me? I hear an airplane outside. That's New York City for you. Um, <laughs> I think that the biggest trend is, I think people actually finally joining this wave that is community. And it's been really interesting to hear people talk about community outside of gaming, because that's what I've done. But also like as we're in the space, because I think that gamers have always known what it means to build community. I think that that's been a lot of what like gaming culture is about. Mm -hmm. um, people make their best friends. People have found like, you know, lifelong partners, different things through this active gaming. And I think that now this conversation around community is one that I feel is a trend. Um, and I'm hoping that it is just, it's broadened to those of us that had to create communities because gaming was potentially toxic or because it was just hard to like get in there. And I also see a trend of not, this is what happened for me when I first came into the space was I didn't consider myself a gamer. Right. And so, um, this, what I'm seeing is a trend of, there's not one way to be a gamer, right? And like actually being open and, and um, accepting that there are multiple ways to be called a gamer. You can be a competitive gamer. You can be a casual gamer. You can be a competitively casual gamer. You can be a cozy gamer. I think that that is also something that I feel is a trend. And I think that it's, it's, it's welcome because what it means is more people who have potentially just been doing it in the background of their lives can now talk about it in the foreground of their lives. And I think that that's also something that I'm seeing as a trend that what I think the last two and a half years of being in the global pandemic that is COVID has done is more people were willing and able to actually say, this is something I do. Um, I, I use this example because like I've been in the dating world, but like you, you know, if people don't put it on their dating profile often because they're like, oh my God, you know, like someone's yeah. going to be upset because this is something, you know what I mean? Like, you know, like, and I think now it's, it's a, it doesn't even matter, right? It's kind of, and, and in five years, it's just going to be a given that everybody games at, in some ways, right? Mm -hmm. And um, and can enjoy it um, on all those levels. So those, I don't know if I answered the innovation question, but those are some of the things or trends question, but those are some things that I'm noticing. No, that's great. I think that that does answer a trend. And I will say as someone <laughs> who basically only plays mobile games, um, mm -hmm. I have been learning my own part in this industry as well. So I appreciate that that's one thing that you've been seeing as a broader trend. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's such a way to bring people together. And, and I remember when my nephew was young, um, he's one of, he was one of April Welch's students at IIT. He just graduated. <laughs> and I couldn't believe it. I went and I visited him at IIT about a month and a half ago and had dinner with some of his friends. And when he walked me to my car, he said, Aunt Megan, I want to thank you 
for watching me play. Mm. And that was very interesting that that was his, you know, cause then this is, you know, this is 10 years ago, maybe. Mm -hmm. And, um, I would just try to be there with him. And I thought when I left, I mean, I was actually tear jerking when I got in my car, I was like, Oh, I got, I was thinking, Oh my God, that's like so special. Um, and now how about parents can actually, or aunts or whatever can play with them. Yeah. You know, a level higher. Exactly. And even if you don't want to, I mean, I did a lot of that with my son as well, because I think that it also just opened up conversation and it's just showing, right? Because he, you know, it was just the barrier kind of opened us up to more conversation. And I think that it also just, you don't have to do all of the things that the people in your life love, but you have to show interest in them. And sometimes showing interest in that person means showing interest in the thing that they love. And that could be just watching. You don't have, you know what I mean? Yeah. It was for me just watching. And, and now, you know, I really try to incorporate more play just in my life. You know, this is what esports has taught me. And this industry is realizing that that is how we bond. Through play, through activity, through work, making things fun, experiences. And that it's opened a world for, I think, um, it was, I have a younger brother, and I guess this maybe was about 10 years ago. Um, We had a conversation, and this was before you saw esports teams, but he talked about his love of video gaming and like all these things, and, and, um, but didn't have, um, I guess, the support to have an outlet for it. And I think that that's also what, I think that's a big trend right now. Everyone's talking about esports, and I hope that this conversation then makes it bigger and broader for us to start thinking about what other games can we include in this ecosystem? Echo or eco? It's ecosystem. My daughter always gets me on that when she's like, "An echo is a sound, mom." <laughs> um, this ecosystem that is esports. What other games can we get involved with? What other people? How do we like kind of open these borders, um, these borders even globally, and get other countries that might have bandwidth issues to be able to participate? in this. Like I'm really excited for um, this possibility if we take it, this opportunity to actually really broaden what esports can be and the numbers of people that can actually be engaged with it. I love that. And speaking of that kind of, I mean, to me, that does say inclusion in a different way, right? It's uh, being more inclusive in what we consider and to be in the industry. But speaking of inclusion, especially with your background as someone who's consistently done organizing around better inclusion um, for all kinds of people, what changes would you like to see within the industry to make it more inclusive? Yeah, I think that the biggest thing is we are at a place where we need to move from like talk to action and we need to actually... um, see it and feel it and live it. Right. And so it's one thing for this to be a conversation. It's another thing to start to see, um, more teams that represent, um, more women or ways, um, or other groups that are not typically seen when we see like the team holding up the trophy or the team in the, in the competition. Right. So I think one is action. Um, and I think that that action is going to involve those that have access. And in this case, it's generally, um, men (laughs) actually being gate openers for others and actually being the ones, I say this a lot, that those that are, I guess, the the ones that are not getting the access are not always the ones that should have to do the work to make the access happen. And that's what we need to see. And this has to start from like all the way down to young, young, young levels, right? All the way down to middle school, because that's actually where they say the point at which a lot of girls specifically will stop playing games is around middle school. That's when it becomes very clear that society doesn't see this as a path for them. And then it closes them off to all of these other opportunities. So how do we have young boys saying like, this is an opportunity for everyone. That goes back to what you were saying, Megan, about being, being around. So if you have a, you know, if you have, if you have a son or sons that are playing, like watch with them, engage with them, let them see you play, say, Hey, let your sister play, let your cousins play. Let's all play. Like, how do we start doing that at a really young age? So that's like, I think one, one way to do that. And I think that the other thing, you know, inclusive means that I feel like this game, um, is about me. Like I see myself represented in this. And so I think that that's the other way to make it more inclusive. If you're shout casters, if you have more women that are shout casting, then I can start to, even if I don't play yet at that competitive level, I see that women are talking about it or shout, you know, or are kind of like the ones that are speaking on it. Or if I see, you know, that the, 
um, owners of esports teams are women, right? Like these are all of the things that need to happen because seeing yourself in something makes you feel like, oh, then I am included in the vision of what people have for that. Well, we are so grateful. And I, and I and I say Lindsay and I are so grateful Verda for you being on the show. And then I also have to say we Esports Trade Association is so grateful for both of you ladies that are going to be coming out to Chicago to share about gaming for everyone. Um what what is a little bit that we have to look forward to? Oh my gosh. That, that, that assumes that I'm a moderator that plans months ahead. Man, I don't know yet. I don't know. That's so cool that you don't know. But what I do know is that you have put together a dynamite panel yeah. you know, with a great group that, you know, shows your commitment toward diversity and inclusion and advocacy for this incredible industry that, that, you know, like, let's face it, it's here and it's here to stay like web three metaverse. Mm -hmm. You know all the things that are happening. Um, I um, I would love to ask about any parting uh, advice besides everybody to join us in Sweet Home Chicago, August twenty second and twenty third. Yes, um, well, well, I will say that one. You know, gaming is for everyone. I think that for me, the reason that I am excited to moderate that is because every panelist has their own story and path to how they will have gotten to that stage on that day. And that's only one of a small set of stories. And I think that the biggest thing is for everyone to leave that panel, understanding that whatever the journey is that you need to take to get here, take it. It's yours and lean into that, right? It doesn't have to look like mine. It doesn't have to look like Lindsay's. It's yours. And that there is space for you in, in this industry. And that we, you know, we're serving as people that are fighting to make that space happen, right? Like, because it's it's not, it's not an easy road. I'm not going to say it's all like, you know, super easy, but trust me, um, this is great. Cause I'm on, you know, it's two women, like all women talking like that. So <laughs> I said, it's not always like that. And so, you know, we'll talk about some of those things as well. Um, and I, I, I think that that's a little bit connected to the parting words. I think that, um, you are your special sauce. Like, so don't let anyone let you think otherwise. And my kind of this part of my life, I'm just really helping myself, but other people to lean into your strengths. And how mm -hmm. do you do that? Um, is that you want to share them with other people, you talk to other people, you build whatever community is that's going to help you do that. But lean into your strengths, because we need more of that in the world. We need more people that and it doesn't, you know, their quirkiness, their uniqueness, their, you know, their flashiness, all of those things. So just lean into your strengths. Oh, I love Lost the that. <laughs> you have. <laughs> oh, I just, I really love that. And uh, especially the quirkiness part. I think that's so great. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us today. Where can people find or follow you or keep up with your work? Ah, yeah. Well, we are the Gamers, G-A-M-E-H-E-R-S in all of the places. And then Verda is not a very common name. I have yet to meet one in my life. So if you type that in, you'll find me on all the socials. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you so much. To find out more about Esports Next and to register for the conference, check out esportsta.org. Thank you.